we will wait for a couple of seconds for people to join in and then we'll move ahead with today's panel discussion. Good evening, Satya. Good evening, everyone. All right, so as I see, a lot of you are joining and will be joining in and the number is rapidly increasing. I would like to extend a very warm welcome from the entire Mindler team to each and everyone who is present here today. We have a brilliant panel of distinguished personalities who will be sharing their insights on beyond the scorecard, exploring the value of entrance exam in higher education for today's colloquium. And it's my pleasure to introduce them to you all. Our first speaker with us is Professor Manika Walia. Professor Manika Walia is the Dean of School of Creativity, Rishihud University, Delhi NCR. Um, just she believes that understanding subject matter is important, but it is also necessary for students to explore beyond the first layer of information, observe critically, analyze, work in teams, develop analytical skills, and become good, successful human beings. She started her career as a freelancer designer with renowned apparel and software niching design studios in India, Hong Kong, and the US, and was engaged in design projects for the Jaipur City Palace and Ministry of Handicrafts and Textiles. She pursued an advanced program in design and sustainability in changing world from London College of Fashion, Kring, the UK. She is passionate about what she does and is always ready to challenge the conventional wisdom at both the level of industry and the higher education sector. She has worked extensively on a number of independent design projects and has contributed to various government and corporate agencies. She is also a distinguished member of Confederation of Indian Industry, working closely with stakeholders for strategizing and implementing all design initiatives in the country. She was honored with Mikkel Fontana Coach of Florence, Italy, and her work towards design thinking was highly recognized in Vietnam. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. Moving ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, moving ahead, we have with us Colonel Surajit Bose, University Chair, KU Global Head of Institution Director, United World Institute of Design. Surajit Bose is the director and a constant in design college of Karnavati University, Ahmedabad. He obtained his MBA from Delhi Productivity Council, New Delhi, and Masters in Economics. He has served as Senior Vice President, Academic Management, International Relations, and Process Reengineering at Pearl Academy for 10 years responsible for academic management, process re-engineering, designing and developing systems, and initiated academic processes benchmarked to international standards. Under his leadership, UID has collaborative partnerships with some of the top design schools in APEC region, Europe and UK, and soon in Canada and America. He has implemented KPMG project with a leadership role for implementation of cloud-based real-time operations and resource optimizations, SAP modules of student life cycle management system, MM, HCM, HR, and FA aligned to SAP process models. His other achievement includes administrative work for UK government sponsored UKIERI and uh, projects for academic admin, academic research and faculty, student mobility. Partnerships with National Skills Development Councils, apparel made up home furnishing sector skills councils, and he is also a proud recipient of Chief of Army Staff Commendation Card for illustrious military service for over 23 years. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. Thank you. Our next speaker with us is Dr. Kalai. He is also a professor of higher academic trade and director of UG Admissions and Outreach, Velour Institute of Technology. Professionally teaching microbiotechnology te related subjects with research on food and environment biotechnology, spearheaded the formation of industrial biotechnology and is a founder chair. As IQAC coordinator formalized the procedures and developed norms for academic auditing as a deputy director of academics was a part of fully flexible credit system implementation in Velour Institute. As a controller of examinations, synchronized the assessment system with FFCS policies and rules designed and developed authoring and deployment of computer-based tests for Willow Institute in 2013. As a director of admissions and outreach, he initiated the IT tools like digital marketing and SEO for students' acquisitions and uh, Willow Institute branding. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Last but not the least, 
Thank you, sir. Last but not the least, our last speaker is Dr. Nitin Malik. Dr. Malik has done his graduation, post-graduation with first class at both the levels and PhD, all from University of Delhi. He started his career in academics as lecturer and then reader in the university department in 1990. In 2001, he joined as deputy registrar at GGS IP University and was promoted to join registrar in 2007. He has extensive experience in senior administrative positions dealing with statutory bodies such as AICTE, UGC, MCI, DCI, Bar Council and NCTE and interactions at various levels of government of NCT of Delhi. He has been nominated member of the fourth state P regulatory committee and served as observer for many national examinations conducted by CBSC, UGC and other universities. He has also been honored with Radha Krishnan Award on Academic Achievement, Mahatma Hansraj Samman Award and various national and state chapters of social organization and clubs. Um, we thank you, sir, for joining us as well. And last but not the least, our moderator for today's panel discussion, Parikshit, sir. Uh, I'll quickly introduce him. Professionally trained from Harvard University, Mr. Parikshit is one of the leading life coach, motivational speaker, and career coaches in the country. With over 20 years of experience, he has mentored and trained more than 2 million students across the various domains and regions. Understanding students' aspiration along with their aptitude and motivating them to achieve excellence has kept him busy for more than two decades. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. The stage is all yours now. Thank you, Aishwarya. Um, dear participants, I welcome you once again on behalf of Mindler and ICCC, and of course, our guests for the evening. Um, I mean, I, I don't know where to start. Uh, you've already uh, heard about them. We have Dr. Kalai, um, Colonel Bose, Professor Walia, and Dr. Nathan here with us. All right, um, good evening to all of you, and I hope all of us will have a great conversation. Dear participants, before I start uh, asking my guests uh, questions related to the topic, I shared this with you this morning that if we just look at the NEET exam in India, IIT JE and CUET, all three of them put together, about these three combined would be taken by around 50 lakh students in India. Okay, and 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 then of course from a from a twelfth class student who's wanting to get out of um, the school and and look at higher education, there are tons and tons of entrance exams, so to say. Um, so there will be a lot of discussion around the entrance exams, and uh, please be with us here from our um, esteemed guests and um, another fun-filled conversation. So my first question. Um, of course, uh, the temptation is to go to Dr. Nitin and talk about CUET, but I'll come back later, <laughs> Professor Valia. My first question, and, and then we will move um, uh, from there. Professor Valia, my question is, do I'm straight away trying to look at um, uh, insights from you. Do entrance tests genuinely test the potential of students? So, uh, Mr. Pariksha, that's a very tricky question what you just, uh, you know, have thrown on to me. Uh, in the Indian context, you know, especially, you know, entrance exams. So my first uh, uh, statement to begin with would be, why do we conduct entrance exams? You know, what is the point of having an entrance exam, especially for the students who are just coming out of their 12th and which is 12th class is also very stressful with the boards and, you know, preparation. So the idea is definitely entrance exams do check their knowledge and understanding for a specific domain. But at the same time, entrance exam also acts as a filter because the seats are limited, right? So, uh, Yes, to an extent, entrance exams are essential, but at the same time, uh, do we really have that uh, procedure where entrance exams are looked into into a very holistic manner? That's the question which I would like to, you know, take it further. Uh, either we are just believing into that rote learning and mugging up and memorizing, or do we actually are assessing or you know one of the parameters of evaluation is how much the student actually knows about the subject you know so that's how i would like to set the ground thank you thank you professor valia uh, okay now uh, dr kalai um, coming from an institution where 
after a student writes um, J Bitsat, and then of course your institution is definitely amongst the the top ones that the student looks at. So so where is the value of entrance exams? How do you see that? Thank you. So I would uh, whatever my views are personal. Sorry, there is a power cut. Yeah. Okay. So, like JE and other exams, our exams is also designed to screen out rather than selecting in. Right? That's a basic thing. Even though for this volume, even if we want to include some other tests, for example, the entrances basically assess what they have learned in this school and slightly above the applications, what they can do with the learning, how they can apply. So this is for engineering, it's okay, but using the entrances alone, in my personal view, is not a good thing to get a quality student. For example, we have analyzed what is the rank for his code and uh, subsequent performance, which do not relate much actually. So there can be a passion developed and uh, we should have some component wherein we can include that passion into the equation of selection so that we will uh, uh, create good students who will excel in the particular field. Again, like this, there is a herd mentality, as you know, I need not say about that. Everybody is after computer science now, which is not a good trend actually. So I would say that the selection should include the students' uh, uh, passion as well as the school's input is also very essential. For example, we have so many schools, when a student learns for 12 years in your school, completely taking it out and they, relying on an entrance examination, which happens one day per year and one slot is not good. For example, there may be a lot of the other chance. He may not be good at that day. He may fall sick. So there are so many equations. Relying on one single score may not be good in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kale. Uh, Colonel Bose, um, of course, yeah. coming from an institution where this is also a very well-known test, um, so so what's your take on on yeah. on so uh thank you very very much parikshit and uh, so many uh, worthy uh, co panelists is indeed uh, very welcome to talk about something which has been so much part of me being part of the services selection board where the parameters are different it takes 4 days psychology becomes a very important part of how you select beyond all the activity and it's a mix mash mode of various things to take out what is it to have what is called the officer like quality but that is something else uh it's been uh, long now about 18 years into a different field and have been part of setting up designing entrance exams and seen the both the advantages and disadvantages now in a 1.3 billion country there has always to be a demand and a way of in which you manage that demand through some standardized formats uh, that becomes essential from a strategic as well as a point of view that you can only manage so much because of resource and so many else and each of them uh, whether it's large platform or small platform yeah but uh there are ways and means and every time we are learning and let's be unique in understanding that it is not only India which faces the problem. You look at South Korea, look at Japan, you like, look at the SAT scores. All of them have devised some methodology of funneling uh, uh, what is called inquiry and curiosity into estimating and mapping passion, mapping numeracy, mapping aptitude. And there are, of course, uh, the whole test prep has gone, I don't know, so exponential that it's nearly about so many, 9 billion is the turnover of this entire test prep industry. So having all these parameters, how do you set something which actually matches and finds the right people for the right type of entrance? And I'm so glad to hear uh, Dr. Kartival, I'm saying that if you do a statistical modeling of who came as per the merit at entrance, and does it map the merit at the time of output or when they are graduating, you'll see that they don't match at all. Because passion, uh, 
uh, comes at various points in time and the dedication and hard work a lot of mentoral support and the ecosystem of a particular industry a particular ecosystem a particular institution and people always look at certain role models and as they grow so having said that i would like to cut it short that we are soon realizing that there is enough of uh, areas for improvement inclusivity gets uh, at the at the altar of rural urban divides at the inclusivity at the pace of affluence gets divided so uh, in many ways when we were young it's only the percentage you got in class at that time metric for my father 11 for me and 12th and plus 3 for a younger generation that's how india has moved but if you look at some skills measurement there i think the design schools have done it slightly better because they have a graded way of getting a student base where there is activity where there is performance so psychographics can also be uh, performed by some performing arts to know team building to know so all these things are both art and science but i would think that as rightly pointed out it's not a single measure it is not a measure which needs lot of improvement even the sat and act of usa constantly gets bombarded in the various parliaments that it is not inclusive the rural are getting left behind and there is room for improvement uh, so having said that i close it at that we'll go along to more questions where pariksha how do we devise a much more inclusive a much more entrance system which stops the anxiety level think of a class 9 10th student he is preparing for something which is 5 years ahead he is a day that day and i'm sorry to explain the put into picture there was a government very highly rated examination a student came from delhi to a particular place was 15 minutes late was not allowed to enter for a exam so that is also the other story that how we have made entrance exam such a big thing where there are so many ways of making it much more less anxious uh, met more uh, spread throughout and also looked at various things a combination of 9 10 11 some work something given forward so that it becomes it doesn't become that those 3 hours or 2 hours makes such a lot of difference I'll, thank I'll you definitely definitely colonel boss will come back there there's lots that you have shared with us um dr malik uh now where we are looking at um, you know delhi university of course is the most uh, talked about university uh, you know as far as students uh, you know this thing uh, then of course your university ambedkar university in delhi now here central universities have seen a maximum shift from 12th class marks now we are straight away looking at entrance exams so you are perfectly sitting there uh, what's your take on entrance exams uh doctor doctor nathan we can't hear you one second can you just check uh no you don't seem muted also can you just check once please team can you help doctor i think there is something wrong with device i think even though he is unmuted uh 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 You'll have to read all it. Ah, uh, one second, team. Can you can you connect with team? Are you there? Anyone? Yes, sir. Please check in. Yeah, please connect. Thank you. Ah, uh, meanwhile, yeah. Can, is it audible now? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So first of all, uh, I was listening to all the panelists and. Uh, a questions being posed by you uh, mr pari parikshit and the basic thing which come is the examination i i sometime uh, doesn't understand and mean like i may be i'm not spectacle for that but examinations we all had been going through the stages throughout the life whether it is in the class or whether it is a day to day activity and as was uh, colonel bose was also mentioning mean like to test the ability of a person or to test the knowledge of a person comes the examination right from uh, starting from the childhood to your secondary education then to your higher education and then to your day to day activities also 
I mean, like examination is a kind of a thing. It has to be taken into a very light uh, mode rather than making it as a very big phenomena that why the examinations are there, why we are carrying it out, and from to uh, the mark system to the uh, common entrance test. Because whether it is a mark system of the schooling grading or the common entrance test, it is basically an examination. Some it is a only the change of the. Face of the coin means like it's on the other side of the coin that you are coming from the uh, school evaluation or your own evaluation system to a common platform system. So that there comes the terminology of a common examination uh, system or a CUET as now the uh, number of central universities and other state universities and other major universities at the higher education level. They are taking it up. And basically, as we all know, that it started only for the central universities. But now it is more open and carried out as a common university entrance test. And it is one of the major parts of the uh, national education policy, which we are on the crossroads for implementing throughout the country. And as rightly said by uh, Dr. Kala Chirun, uh, for engineering or for medical. So we had been carrying out this kind of uh, entrance test examination in the past also. And no doubt, because of the demand and supply things which were there, uh, the number of seats were less in the engineering colleges or in the medical colleges and the demand being at a very high rate. So there used to be a kind of a uh, more towards the elimination side of a thing, making the more meritorious person or making a more uh, person who are onto a higher merit to come to the seats compared to the, comparing to the demand. So definitely the examination is a very, very wide word. And then in that, we have to see the processes which Colonel Bose and even Professor Manika was talking about. Then we need to define and carry out that what kind of a examination pattern will suit for the system to analyze, I mean, like to, to understand or to make it on a uniform pattern. So there are different ways of carrying it out and uh, CUET being carried out now being onto the EQ percentile method or into a normalization of a score, depending upon the toughness of the paper or the moderate or the variety or the diversity. So this needs to be understand more to be have a comprehensive consideration for the examination. But it's my own personal view as well as my own experience of uh, more than uh, three decades in the university system that I find that, yes, this is a system, this is a platform, uh, the common entrance test, which, which is required to at least understand the potential of the candidate, to understand the aptitude of the candidate, at least to tell the and make the candidate also understand whether this will be a right uh, part to choose or right spec to be fit into it, or otherwise I am not into the right direction. That is what is my personal view. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Man. Um, Professor Valia, uh, he's raised a point which we discussed in the beginning, um, you know, that is that to choose the more meritorious student, right? Or the person with more ability. Now, that means, in a way, are we suggesting that people who make the cut in the entrance exams, they are definitely more meritorious or absolutely above, uh, or they have a better ability than others? I mean, this is another question. Over to you, Professor Valia. Thank you, Mr. Parikshit. So what Dr. Nitin has just said, you know, partially I agree with him, but, uh, you know, again, uh, there's a little controversy which I would like to raise it. The term meritorious, does the score define whether the student is meritorious or not? How? One size will not fit all, you know, that's how. So there's a very interesting thing when in the classrooms of, you know, when we are developing the session plans, we always talk about the rubric, the assessment rubrics, and the very interesting model which comes up is, can fish climb the tree or can elephant climb the tree? So similarly, on that, that you know, base, I would like to say that if we are talking about the merit, which is judged purely on the basis of score, what happens to the students? And then how do we define that, you know, there are certain reservations already there's certain percentage of reservations then there is a percentage of economically weaker section then there's a separate uh, uh, percentage which is reserved for sports quota so what happens to those meritorious general category students how do we look into it 
so for me it's like you know uh, so, so again like you know how iits and iis scs and uh, uh, delhi and mumbai iits they are there in the world ranking but do any other university of india has reached the ranking level of the world do the, do we have ever climbed that you know even after independence are we there how come you know there's a lot of difference between the international universities the selection criteria of inter i'm not talking talking you know we have these few liberal universities which are coming up and the model is seeping in into the indian higher education also but then how how do we do it each and every committee member of the admission team they sit on to their application they do look into their sops they do look into the lors there is a deep deliberation on to each and every application it's nothing to do just by the score so what even dr kalai was saying that we do have to have certain statistical procedures probably that kid is not feeling well during that day when the exam is so how do can we just label that kid is not a meritorious student maybe you know what uh, uh, colonel bol suggested that you know a student was late by 15 minutes we can't have a control on to these external factors then how do we look into it so it again you know for me i believe and i firmly believe that the admission entrance exam or you know the admission process should be more holistic it should not be uh, uh, you know measuring just the score or just the g mugging up ability or the memorizing ability or maybe you know just uh, putting into the cycle of coaching centers it should be about the own candidate the individual candidate the personality of the candidate the caliber and the aptitude of the candidate you know so these are my thoughts thank you professor valya um Dr. Kalai, Professor Valia did talk about so many things. One is the that are we are we saying that students who make the cut are they meritorious students? Number one. Second, she talked about coaching institutes, and then definitely along with entrance exam, there has to be something else, a better holistic uh, you know selection process. Now, my question is, I'm picking up the coaching statement there. <clears throat> How do we say that these students who make the cut are meritorious students? when all of them have access or most of them or the privileged ones they have access to the best coaching institutes they have the ability to spend lakhs um, on these coaching institutes so so what about the ones who don't have access to those coaching institutes then then where does merit go i mean just a question dr kalai oh uh, yes mr prakash so it's definitely should be pondered because the inclusivity what is being practiced even the us in many universities have uh, sort of the selection procedure as test independent so the same problem they also have and many institutes now waive the sat score what is required rather than they look at the what is their uh, achievements in the schools and they connect to the teachers and their school principals and uh, estimate their ability whereas in india that may not be possible because of the the huge test takers that's one thing we have to agree and at one level we need the test scores there is no uh, denying that we need a test score to just equate out the difference in the teaching between all the boards so there is also another way we can do that for example we can look at the percentile so what is the equity percentile that happens in cuut can also happen in the boards actually so which not, nobody has taken looked at the thing in fact there was a committee in iit when there was a comparison of je ea triple e right i think in 2010 or 11 the committee examined the what is the effect of the je at that time it was ai triple e i think in the subsequent person compare the schools and all so there was one member suggested to use the percentile and compare all the boards so if this happen the central governments as well as state, state governments should get it up actually so the again this can be only a uh, equivalent of the entrance exam score as uh, many agree all do not have the resources to access to a educational or uh, coaching center the coaching in fact they just augment the ability to answer some questions by uh, training giving a lot of training but there should be a test which assess the innate ability to learn for example the cognitive reasoning or something 
we should be a part of the test if that happens irrespective of the field the student will learn so this is the prince i mean main principle behind sat and other cognitive and reasoning exams if we can include such an exam over and above the state board examinations or central board examinations that will be a good is a better uh, holistic uh, score than what is being practiced now that's my view thank you thank you dr clay uh, colonel boss now i am uh, i'm just a point on uh, dr kalai so is sad they are following test optional or test flexible no yes. meaning the same thing these are the two terms they are using for making it uh, something more inclusive and just to carry on that as he said when I mean, some of the things i agree that uh, so one is this topic is much larger and thanks to mindler that they have to sort this topic uh, i think we can have a series on this topic so that uh, because this is impacting anxious parents young parents uh, parents of their second child third child it's a whole paradigm in which we have got sucked into as a country let's be very clear but seeing the supply seeing the demand there's only that much and the filtration needs to happen that we can't get out of that how do it make it less anxious less make a test long drawn hybrid embedded even telling someone to come from a city by flight and reach at a particular time it's also is a very anxious and a costly thing so when affluence versus inclusivity debate comes in it flies out of the window but uh, i agree to the part that while having that there are many ways of when things are made flexible optional there are other means which needs to take in a statement of purpose video essay and a writing essay looking at his extra curricular activities staging the design of a test which doesn't impact only one part of it or having the flexibility to accommodate as and when there's a days of medical or other aspects so there's a whole design because we have been doing quite a lot and to be uh, telling a few members who may or may not about how design selects so there are three four ways one is merit that that most is most courses although rubrics forms a part of it but are continuous assessment up to 50% is continuous assessment it is not just one thing the portfolio itself which is a combination of their thinking skills critical skills their sketching skills and be to explain has gone into something because we see out of this test prep everyone comes with nearly similar type of portfolios huge ones coming all the way from i don't know so many kilometers and the first thing uh, knows that that is something which is not what the student is and how to measure passion i have known of situations where a book of poems of a student who has have that as a passion is good enough as a huge portfolio for us to know that yes she has it in her to be admitted to a desired school reciting something a poem and a song is as good as having huge preparations through all the types of test prep coaching classes we have so that is where the design of a test and the type of people somewhere we'll come to biases and all then we'll come to that at a later stage how do we move against biases but between merit merit before merit during and merit after there are few ways of uh, extracting some of the ways to understand if the student fits into a particular ecosystem yeah thank you colonel boss um, amazing insights from from our uh, panelists here uh, dr nitin uh, there is another trend that's coming up now uh, of course uh, during covid iitj was held four times a year uh, you know just to to handle that and now there are many private um, uh, you know universities they are conducting um, you can apply twice three times four times you can take these tests during the same year what's your take on it should be is it is it good to have just one time on a particular day in a year or there should be multiple chances what are your take on on entrance exam being conducted in this way i i think that uh, and it has been into a it has been in experimented also means like now the even the je also they have a uh, two chances uh, in a year 
so it is always better to have the best of the scores because uh, maybe at present as we were all discussing as the panelists were also talking about it the system of the common entrance test is not a very still adaptive in our country because of our distinctive features and diversity all across geographical conditions availability and especially the cbt mode when when we are talking about the computer based test people are even not aware of they are not even familiar of and that is what we keep telling to the students we as we are sitting in delhi right now even the students who are at delhi they are staying at delhi they are studying in the schools of delhi even they are not also been aware of the cbt mode so they they go directly to the examination center with lot of anxiety lot of confusion just go over there the timer start they do not know where exactly to hit how what does the color combination on the dashboard means how many questions you have attempted whether you can skip to that question you can come back to that question or you can do that question later on so that kind of a training has never been given to any of the student and they are just simply landed into a new domain and they are given so that is what is required the first foremost is that if we are going for any kind of a uh, common entrance test or any let us say even for the cvt i am not talking about the je or the neat and that there comes the role of all the training centers see mean like dr kali was telling about it that coaching centers they train you in a specific manner they there they make you carry out the things in a time bound manner that how you have to attempt the questions what questions are to be attempted at first what kind of a level of things has to be taken and all and then you have to practice so more and more practice those students they get into it and that is why they try to and get it more into the marks of the thing so first basic thing is that as the question goes that yes we should have more number of chances to be given to a candidate to understand because it it all depends even in a 3 hour system which we had a conventional system uh, so 3 hours used to decide your entire uh, uh, learning of the things in the previous convention method even in the board also it means like i am not well on that day or i have skipped something or i have missed i am not able to reach the examination center on time and that kills my entire and that decides my entire future that my marks are gone so better is that we should have a number of uh, chances number of attempts so that the student can uh, perform and the best of the performance to be accounted on that thank you thank you dr anik um yes this is a trend um, and and lot of uh, private universities are bringing in um you know you can write these exams twice a year or thrice a year uh, right um professor walia uh now on one side we are talking about entrance exams and then as as uh, you know dr uh, malik talked about um students are not trained how to write these exams how to take what's the process you know how to go about it or the entire practice uh but that would mean then huge dependence on the coaching institutes for entrance exam and on the other side we are removing the 12th class um board Uh, system to to quite some extent to quite an extent actually so then um, how do we find a balance here isn't that going to coaching institutes isn't that becoming another stress then well i think you know the whole culture of having uh, mr parikshit having these coaching centers why do we need coaching centers why can't we relook into the education system at the school level you know the classroom learnings the campus learnings right the school there has to be a reform at the k12 level why do we actually need a coaching center maybe the tuition centers and this has been you know more like you know a a business model now what colonel bose was also saying even in the design the portfolio across all the students from north to south it's exactly the same the same perceptions the same 3d drawings the same perspective the stay same still life the same color theory it's exactly the same but is it can't this all be taught to the students with the nep when cbsc and the other state boards have raised their flexibility bar why the student cannot be prepared into the classroom itself you know so there are reforms which are required in the classroom reforms for the examinations reforms you know on what parameters are we judging even reforms towards the entire k12 
campus uh, life learnings and you know the social skills so i think there's there's no need to have a coaching center if the schools are performing their responsibilities well or maybe the schools are allowed to perform their responsibilities well because teachers are time bound you know there's lot of things beyond teaching the admin work the so much of other paperwork so i understand you know teachers do have their restriction but can all these things be relooked a teacher should be allowed to teach teacher should be allowed to create and innovate those new pedagogical tools so that you know he or she can prepare the students so i think it's it's a reformation is required from the basic uh, and the early level thank you professor valia and uh, just to add to that uh, dear participants if we see um when we talk about coaching institutes and schools and and also the you know such a strong sense of entrance exams all around you so students either they will go to these schools and then go to the coaching institutes or then the new phenomena or the phenomena that has already been there for some time is the dummy schools where they will say why it's the why even go to a school why straight away next two years you could go to the entrance exam and an entrance exams are today not in 11th and 12th preparation now students are going as early as 6th and 7th god bless us um um dr kalai uh, i understand one thing which all of you have emphasized that that yes with a country like ours that holistic um filtration process is not possible because we are looking at huge numbers agreed i think we are all in sync to that uh now now there is another trend of online exams remote proctoring right now when you talk about of course the good old paper pen a lot of people were comfortable and and adding to what dr malik said that if you don't know how to use technology how will you be able to give your best so so now that this trend of online exams and of course thankfully we are still on computer based testing we are not on computer adaptive that will take another um another ideation another requirement uh, dr kalai when we talk about so many entrance exams and of course now the online how will the students be able to handle that kind of a pressure that's it's very difficult see for example there are so many institutes conducting so many exams attending all of them in fact it's very stressful for students parents and also that is why i said it should be holistic and there should be we can have only one exam and probably add to that based on the technical or career the the student wants to have pursue for example the architecture definitely we need an aptitude test for architecture which nata is uh, conducting similarly design we have seed and uc so such kind of so what you can say that uh, additional technical skills can be assessed through a central examination board because state examinations boards are not equipped for the, that kind of uh, assessment so that can be added thing but instead of multiple exams we can have multiple test for careers for example i may be interested in engineering or allied field so i can take one exam if i want to go into medicine already we have a need so that would be a good option so well kind of things should also available for clot so we have for law we have clot or lsat which focus on the law selection so we can add to that which will lie above the plus 2 score for example whatever school uh, there should be some component in the school grade card we specify the emotional quotient of the student which is very important for the current thing for example i see lot of students coming in especially after covid they are not able to uh, cope up with the college stress actually so you might have noticed lot of uh, other unhealthy issues happening and they resort to unhealthy uh, habits also because of that to just do away with the stress so this kind of stress as well as one more thing is the identification of the career for a student we should happen at the school level see so uh, the parents may have a say but in fact the teacher can identify what's uh, what's good for the student if he is if the she or he can really focus on the day to day behavior of the stu student in the schools so i would say uh, it should be holistic and school should play a major role in the career of the students rather than 
other things around and naturally there will be, there should be counselors many cbsc schools have counselors but that has has not percolated to other government schools so government should also uh, should recruit counselors and guide the students appropriately right from the young age so that which career is good for him uh, that's my thought actually thank you thank you colonel boss quick quick one here quick input from you um would you endorse as uh, dr kalai talked about like clat is for all national law schools lsat for all many private uh, schools then you have a j for engineering you have need for medicine similarly now cuet has come in for all central universities and of course there are many other private universities which are joining hands so do you think this will at least kind of you know uh, make it less stressful that i don't have to write 10 15 entrance exams in just one what's your view the simple answer is yes it reduces a lot of stress but it is the uh, the see the vastness of this country see the types of players into it and if i digress so i was just looking at the paper of 9.8 billion is the test prep industry in india i don't think anywhere in the world so having coaching classes is the first bane of the whole society and the whole system if you may ask a very activist type of view because from class 3 onwards people have got into it as a parallel track of education i don't think anywhere in the world something of this sort happens that and see the investment so the largest investment is a house and the next investment is to prepare your children for being successful in life and who knows that entrance exam is the only success in life and there's such a lot of uh, transferable skills life skills passion so many things get into making a very holistic person so on one end i am very much into the fact that what are we all doing we are trying to make the new india we are trying to make the inclusive india who doesn't have all sorts of things and luxuries to be able to stand up in the same So, so that all, so the field means it is again going to be that can we have a level playing field, which does will never come if we have such things. So the only thing what many institutions do is to how to help. Like Professor Malik was saying that you have YouTube's, you have all your test papers printed, you have it on your own website so that a student learns that what are the ways to do it and certain amount of the counselors helping. students at all levels private as well as in government schools to get into this yeah. so uh, so it is a very very exciting topic so there are many things i'm just bubbling over in trying to explain that there are ways and it is more when something can't be avoided in such a large country there has to be filtration there are only that many resources and that many people can sit in a class and you can't have a system that it's like a a uh, a uh, uh, sort of a three shift type of school and a three shift type of education especially in design where you need huge huge infrastructure and you can bring down the cost only that much having said that uh, we need to design our test better now let me say that in the design what we do is a pen and paper test is just 30% to 40% the studio test where it is activity based which is mentored monitored and mapped has got another 30% and the last 30% is the interview and personal so you have divided it in such a way that you get to know the essence and there are multiple players so to remove biases you have external people so that they look at it from a holistic point of view in a jury you don't have one person but three persons who have a different experience to find out which is the way and many things are there oh that's now true. the last point is that why don't we have a test system where the extra curricular marks the essays they write the type of sop they have written and only go by one or two tests to design such a big huge skill development of that person these are some of the things i think the country and the government needs to realize very soon yeah thank you thank you colonel boss i hope this happens during at least my lifetime uh, yeah. dr dr malik uh, back to you again um now cuet is established is here for good now what's your take that what do you visualize 
are we going to go the CUET way and have common entrances, one entrance test for, for our entire domain or, or for a certain set of um, uh, courses and so on? How do you see the future? Uh, Dr. Malik, you're muted. Uh, yeah, if you uh, just... Before I come to that, I was just, uh, it was, I was being reminded of my days, I means like, I'm, I think uh, most of us, I, mean, I do not know, but uh, when I was a student, just uh, feel that if we used to go for any tuition, so that used to be in an isolation, it used to be taken as a negative aspect that this student requires a tuition. So it was a kind of a thing in the society, Are aapke, you, your son is going for a tuition over there. So that means he's not good. He's not capable of doing He requires extra something now. And now see the trend, what the trend is. I mean, like who has created this trend? It is not the market forces. No doubt that market forces come when the demand and supply come. But as a parent, as an individual, somewhere we are also responsible because we all want to stand ahead of the queue. That whether I am into that or I am not into that, but I want to achieve this. And for that kind of a achievement, I mean, like I want to go for the uh, coaching institute. So with due regards to all the coaching people who are listening to us, I am not against that, that, that coaching institutes are bad. But what exactly is mean, like I will just share the simple uh, experience we had. We, the CUT came uh, for the first time last year, right? So the common university entrance test started before that all central universities or any other like before coming to Ambedkar University, I was in IP University and I was looking after the admissions as well as the examinations. So the IP University in Delhi had been conducted, conducting its own common entrance test since inception. From uh, 99 onwards, when we started with the engineering or any courses over there, whether right, it be BCA or BBA or all uh, professional or any courses. So we used to carry out our own CET and definitely as Dr. Kali was, Kali was mentioning about this, there is no match on the mark scored into the entrance and the mark, mark scored into the uh, 12th and the mark scored after the graduation or after taking the course. But then also mean like it was a platform where at least we were able to fit in the people, majority of the people, so that they can be admitted and can get the choice of their uh, program which they want to go. So CUT when it came last year, so people were not aware. They, people were not aware of the things more. And then also there was a very less coaching institute. There was a very kind of uh, opposition from the schools also. Most of the schools and especially the public schools and the uh, private schools. So they were opposing that why the marks of the schools are not being taken and all and all and that. And coaching institutes were also not very convenient and very confused about it. But then also we had a very good results when the students came because as rightly said by Colonel Bose, we need to develop a system, we need to develop the examination into a pattern which is accessible with equity and opportunity to all at the most. Then only making a scale which is unilinear. It cannot be a scale where we make it kind of a thing like we, I, I'm again, sorry, I, I may be wrong. But the JE and the NEET people mean like what my experience is that no doubt that for JE, they start a two years preparation for making a question paper for the JE as well as for the NEET. They started now the NTS carrying out the things over there. So testing agency is there. But still what we need is we need the common component to test the ability and potential of a candidate. And last year admission, which we had from CUT, even in my university, we had a numerous good students who are comfortable and compatible to the programs on the marks they scored into the CUT. So now this year again CUT now the number of participating universities has increased and then there is a number of coaching institutes also double tripled and four times mean like everybody is now running. So now the, the, there is a feeling among the students that we don't want to go to the schools. The teachers are again in trouble. The school is again in trouble. The principals are making a request to the parent. Please send your ch ch child to the school. The parents are saying there is no fun going to the school because he has to appear to the CUT. So he will take schools are not giving the CUT training. So they are giving, they are completing the syllabus. So there has to be a, 
synchronized way of understanding what exactly is required. So basically, we ourselves have to change our mindset, all the parents, all the students, and speci specifically the people who are also conducting the testing agencies has also to keep it in mind that it has to be a common platform where the variety and diversity is to be taken into an inclusion to find out the right way and right path so that maximum number of the students get benefited out of it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Malik. Thank you so much. Um, I know, dear participants, it's already 6.12 and we have just come to the end of it. Just one simple uh, I know we've had a, a very healthy discussion and we've definitely looked at, um, you know, Dr. Kalai, Dr. Malik, Colonel Bose, Professor Walia. Thank you so much for sharing your views. If, if it just one, one line that all of you could say, what are four, I mean, one, one each, what are things that could improve the system? Dr. Kalai, first line for you. One solution, if you could sum it up again, one line. I would say counseling. Great. Thank you so much. Colonel Bose. I would say uh, various ways in which what are the type of tests is known and especially to the urban and the people who are so diverse in a country like this, how do we reach out to them so that they need? Well, inclusivity, I may be saying, and it looks a little bit, you know, uh, that how and why. That is what is going to take India, means we are going too much. There's huge divide and uh, there's huge uh, amount of them. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Walia. So for me, it would be more holistic approach. Thank you. Dr. Malik. Uh, I will say right information, informative and practice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much once again. And thank you, participants, for being with us. I, I, you know, my hearty um, appreciation. Thank you so much for being with us and giving us your precious time. Uh, yeah. Ashwarya, over to you. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Parikshit. Thank you so much, panelists, for being thank you, Dr. very proud to be part of this thing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thank you, Malik, Malik, and of Bye. course, Professor Walia, we know uh, quite well. Pleasure Malik. seeing you here, Colonel Bose. <laughs> Likewise to all the participants. Yeah. Thank you for this and platform. Parikshad, of course, is the real, real motor behind yes. everything. You know? And like someone said, no, it is our motor skills also need to be tested somewhere. The extracurricular, the, because as they said, that uh, something is getting done in the fields of Eton and Harrow, that we are forgetting some of our old sayings of how a student holistically has to develop, not only academically, but a holistic development of a Person. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you, much. Mindler and yeah. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you to all the panelists. And uh, it was really, you know, amazing to hear your thoughts and your learnings. And uh, thank you, Parikshit, sir, for moderating it so brilliantly. Um, well, dear participants, before we say goodbye for today, uh, just a very important information. Tomorrow, please be there back at 8:45 as we have day two of ICCC and it's going to be power back as we promised. So thank you once again for joining everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you.